It's stark, it's clean-lined, it's modern. This is what concrete-age man believes he should live in in the 70s. Every inch of high-rise dwelling, every pre-stressed layer says that this town is modern. Where are we? From the faces of the buildings, it could be any up-to-date city, from Los Angeles to Liverpool, from Rotterdam to Rio. It's trendy, it's swinging, it has all the signs of a go-ahead town determined to get on the modern map and to show that this is where it's all happening. And where exactly is this architectural apocalypse, this town of tomorrow? Would you believe Wigan? Yes, Wigan. That was part of Wigan. But says so this. Awful, dreary, grimy, unlovely Wigan. The place the musicals have been joking about for years. The place that no one was proud to come from. The natives of Wigan haven't even invented a name for themselves. You never heard of a Wigonian. Perhaps the people who come from here would rather forget it. But now, things are happening to Wigan. There's a new breed of men here who've noticed that these days, any modern city worth the description has to have its share of deep holes and high cranes. And they're pushing poor old Wigan onto the bandwagon and giving the town a facelift. But the planners aren't having things all their own way. There's at least one citizen who says they've got it wrong. The cobbled streets are sleeping under a tarmac shroud The feet which wore your surface smooth Are shadows in the clouds Tell me, Mr. Planning Man How long my house will stand Or will the bypass swallow me Digested by the sand The cobbled streets are vanishing the tram lines are all done. The concrete jungle rises up. My God, what have we done? Keith Roberts, folk singer and schoolteacher, is not impressed by Wigan's headlong tumble into trendiness. And he says so in song, in his collection, The Road to Wigan Pier and Back. Wigan Pier, of course, is an old joke at Wigan's expense. There isn't a pier. Usually, a pier is a pretty frivolous thing on a seafront. So pretending that Wigan has a pier is a way of underlining the town's ugliness, like putting a beauty spot on the face of a plain woman. Well, the original Wigan pier was just over there, so I believe. Uh, you say the original one. Was there actually a structure? Well, I think that uh, the collieries used to bring coal down to the pier, and they had a depot over there, and there was a, a, an iron structure which they used to used to run the coal trucks down to load the barges up in the canal. And you've placed some value on this Wigan Pier. Oh yes, it's very valuable. In, in fact, this famous Wigan Pier of ours, we hope, is going to have a preservation order on it very, very soon. And we're hoping to get the people uh, going about this. But it's not there. Of course it's there. Anyone can see there's a pier there. It's where the barges tie up and uh, all the machinery and everything. It's just like any other ordinary conventional pier. It's obviously very important to you whether oh, it's there or not. Very important, very important, yes. Now, what about all these protest songs of yours? What are you really on about? Well, I'm a little bit worried in case the people who are trying to rebuild our Wigan are going to take the heart out of the place, and it'll, it will, I think, just become another northern town with no real character about it at all. Saving old Wigan isn't Keith Roberts' only crusade. He makes himself a thorn in the authorities' flesh whenever he sees fit like over Wigan's River, the Douglas. He says that the water's so thick that they have gangs of men shoveling it down to the sea. If you want a suntan, go to Wigan Town. Dive into the River Douglas, come up Mucky Brown. Hey, come up Mucky Brown, come up Mucky Brown. Dive into the River Douglas, come up Mucky Brown. Oh, mighty river Douglas, with swirling, rippling tide, your roaring, pounding waters are in places four feet wide. In places four feet wide, in places four feet wide, your roaring, pounding waters are in places four feet wide. Now you won't catch a salmon, bream or rudd or pike, but you might catch typhoid or a rusty iron bike. A rusty iron bike, a rusty iron bike You might catch typhoid on a rusty iron bike Through Wigan, lovely Wigan 
the rippling Douglas flows And if you want to kill yourself Forget to hold your nose Forget to hold your nose Forget to hold your nose If you want to kill yourself Forget to hold your nose Keith Roberts throws coal dust all over Wigan's new image and over its planners. He doesn't want Wigan to lose its roots, the back-to-back -back houses and cobble streets from the great days of the coal mines. The planners believe in their vision of a new city, wonderful Wigan. A little vision wouldn't do any harm either. Old Wigan is a down-at-heel sort of place with all the signs of a dreary, defeated view of life. There aren't many towns of 70,000 people where they'd gloomily tell you in the main hotel's restaurant that peaches are off because we can't find the tin opener. When all's said and done, the planners and the folk singer both want the same thing, really, a better town to live in. Keith Roberts' only fear is that in their rush to push away the past, the planners may overdo it, and Wigan will end up not with a new identity, but with none at all. Two centuries ago, a Lancashire town Discovered a fortune deep down underground Some called it black gold, some far worse names But at last to all Wigan came fortune and fame Conditions improved and prosperity came Wigan men worked with their hands and their brains The country grew rich with its tallies and cars But the land round the coal field was battered and scarred You've cast off your shawls and the clogs from your feet Raised up the moat away from cobble streets But please don't forget all the values of old And the men who helped build you 